Hi, I'm Seth with Air Theater Designs, and I want to thank you for purchasing a new URC remote through us. You may have purchased the MX990, the 780, the 790. Don't worry about the number, but I want to go over some basics that just go over how to use your remote, how it works with certain components, some advanced steps, and then some troubleshooting if things ever act up a little bit. So first, we'll talk about the main button. Uh, regardless of the remote that you have, main is your friend. So anytime you get lost, anytime you go, hey, where am I at? I'm not sure what's going on here. Your main button is gonna be right below your LCD screen, and it's gonna be a yellow button right in the middle. Push main, main will take you back to your start of day, and that's where you're gonna see all of your component commands. So if you wanna watch cable TV, if you wanna watch Apple TV, use Roku, push main, then pick the desired source. And talking about the desired source, so if I wanted to, for example, watch cable TV, I would push main, I would then push the button that says watch cable, bing, bang, boom, everything's gonna go to the right input, right sound mode, and then you're rocking. From there, all of your buttons below are pretty self-explanatory and they'll be just like they are on your standard cable remote or Apple remote. So for cable, you got your one through nine and zero for your channels. You got your up, down, left, right, select to take you through navigation and menus. You have your guide to bring up your program guide. You have your record buttons, your play, pause, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so cables, very straightforward. Let's talk about some of our other components that are popular these days. So let's talk about an Apple TV streaming device. To get to that, you would hit main. You would then hit watch Apple TV. Everything goes where it needs to go. Your Apple TV is a little bit different. Uh, the Apple remote itself is very simple and just has up, down, left, right, select, and then has a menu button. The way it works with Apple is if you hit the menu button, it's going to take you back one screen. Now to explain that, so let's say I'm at my start of day menu in my Apple TV, and I then go to Netflix. Imagine that taking you to another screen. I then go into documentaries. That takes me to another screen. I then pick a specific genre of documentary. That takes me to another screen. So sometimes people get lost. They turn on their Apple TV, help, I don't know where I'm at. If you hit menu once, menu is your button at 10 o'clock from your up, down, left, right, select. If you push it once, it's gonna take you back one screen. So it might go from genres of documentaries to documentary. If I'm totally lost, I got, I got no idea where I'm at, or you just wanna go back to your start of day. If you hold menu down for a couple seconds, that'll take you back from all those screens, you're back at your Apple TV menu. So keep that in mind, menu, not main, main takes us to our start of day. Menu will take you back one screen, hold it down, takes you all the way back. Aside from that, up, down, left, right, select, it'll let you do everything else you need to do. With your Roku streaming devices, which are also very popular, it's a little bit different main to watch Roku. With Roku, your menu button will take you right to your start of day. So you push it just once instead of holding it down and then we have Netflix, Amazon, Hulu and the 500 other apps that exist. If you wanted to go back one screen, like I mentioned with the Apple TV where you're four or five screens in, there's an aptly named back button that's gonna be on your LCD screen. So back will take you right to there. Roku's a little different as well as some of the codes that are available with that allow you to go directly to Netflix, directly to Amazon, directly to YouTube and some other apps without having to go into the main menu. So if you see those buttons on your LCD screen, hitting Amazon, Netflix will take you right to those. Uh, aside from that, up, down, left, right, select, will do everything you need to do. And then below that on our remotes, you'll see your play, pause, forward, uh, fast forward, rewind, that'll take you where you need to go. Um, couple other buttons, the top of each remote, you got an on and an off. Off is very self-explanatory, off means off. So when you're done for the day, wanna go to bed, hit off, that'll turn off everything in the system. The on button, we call that the babysitter button. So normally your order of operations, whatever you wanna do, you hit main and then cable TV. Main, listen to Sonos. Main, Apple TV. But let's say somebody comes over that doesn't know anything about your system. We call it the babysitter button because babysitter comes over, babysitter don't know Apple TV, babysitter don't know watch and this or main and this. They just wanna watch television. So when you, or the babysitter, hits the on button, we're gonna have that create the most common source that you're accessing. So for a lot of people, it's cable TV. Babysitter comes over, hey, what do I do? When they hit on, that's going to turn on cable TV and get everything going for that. So that's our on and off on there. Um, now a couple advanced functions. So lots of times people will have where they want to, give an example, 
They go to Pandora, Internet Radio. They go, I want to listen to the Beatles station for nine hours, but they don't want their TV on the whole time. So when you go main, let's say they were accessing Pandora through Roku, they would go use Roku. To the left and right of your main button is going to be a horizontal dash, and that horizontal button will take you to a second page. That second page will have a button called TV Power. TV Power does just that. It turns on or off the TV power if you want to turn off your television, but enjoy audio sources. And again, the common thing for that is people going to Pandora, nine hours of Beatles, turn off the TV. The other thing that's going to be on that page is what we call our sync page. So lots of times people with audio will have speakers in other areas, speakers outside, speakers in the kitchen, master bedroom, etc. When you hit that source you want to listen to, so a common one is if somebody is listening to Sonos music. Main, listen to Sonos, that gets Sonos rocking, but then you want to listen in the other areas. You'll hit that horizontal page that'll take you to the next page and you'll see something that'll say like sync house. What that means is it's synchronizing what's playing in zone one or we, your family room and now it's playing in zone two which would be the rest of the house. Um, sometimes that name might be a little different so if somebody just has outdoor speakers it might say like sync outside or sync patio or something like that but that's how you would access that sync function. Go to your second page and access it. Uh, and those will be kind of the two main advanced features that people use. Uh, let's, oh, one other thing I will hit on is sometimes, I'm gonna do it slowly, the light goes away on your remote. If you have one of our rechargeable models, give it a little shake. Hey dude, wake up. That'll get the remote rocking. On some of our other models that use batteries, there's gonna be a light on the side of it. So when you hit that light, that will then light up. Typically we have that light up for about 20 to 30 seconds. Light goes out again, again, either push the light button or give it a little shake. You typically don't want to push other buttons because if you push any button, it's going to turn the light on, but sometimes that'll take you out of the source that you're in. So the best thing is to do is just give it that little shake. Um, troubleshooting. The biggest troubleshooting thing that we see is fixed by take the battery cover off, Take the battery out of the remote. When you put it back in, make sure it all lines up. For example, on this one, and you're kind of far away, it might be hard to see. Three little tabs. Those tabs need to match what you got in here. Put it back in place. The battery or the remote will reboot itself. You're back in business. With our other remotes that use standard batteries, double A's or triple A's, pull the batteries out, wait 10 seconds, put them back in. Um, also, if you have a low battery, both of our remotes are going to have an indicator at the top. They'll have a little horizontal battery. It'll go from green to red, depending on where your charge is. Sometimes if the battery is really low, the functionality will be limited or you'll have problems. So just make sure you got a full battery. But just like everything else these days, it locks up. Sometimes your computer, hey, what's going on computer? It doesn't want to work. You turn it off, turn it back on, it works. Just like your cell phone, hey, why does my cell phone sound funky? Hey, why am I not getting message? Turn it off, turn it back on. This is effectively how you turn off and on the remote by rebooting it, and that takes care of it. The other troubleshooting thing that we sometimes see is lots of our remote controls have a thing called a radio frequency brain. Long story short, it's a little box that goes in with your components. Components meaning your audio video receiver, your Apple TV device, your cable box. And it allows your remote to work uh, your system or control your system through closed doors where you have to point. See a little wire like this? This wire is attached to a little doodad thing called a flasher. This flasher goes on the front of each component it's trying to control. And if these things get knocked off, housekeepers love to come in and do a great job cleaning, and they clean this off, and all of a sudden it's no longer on the front of the component. That'll make it where your remote can no longer talk to that component, because instead of this thing being in the correct spot, it's now hanging on the ground somewhere, and it's not controlling that component. Always start with the battery first, and if there's questions from there, give us a call. We can determine if the offending wire is a problem. Aside from that, you're going to be good to go, and hopefully you'll get years of utility and fun out of your system and not have to uh, throw the remote out the window. Thank you very much. Have a good day.